And God is on. Hey, welcome to God on, everybody. <clears throat> Here on God on, we talk about what God says on practical, everyday choices and challenges. And um, we're reading God's mind through reading God's book. All right? And verifying what God has said and what God thinks about what we need to do and what God knows we need to do so we activate those things. So welcome to the program today. We've been talking about praise and worship, uh, the twin horns of Jehovah Jireh. You remember Genesis twenty two thirteen, 13, where Abraham was offering the sacrifice of his son because God had asked him to offer his only son. God stops him in the middle of the sacrifice and says, I have provided myself a ram. And he turned and a ram was caught by both of his horns, double portion, two horns in the thorn bush. And so we're talking about the twin horns of Jireh. What are the horns of the Lamb of God, the Ram of God, the sacrifice of God? And they are praise and worship, power and authority. Praise, power, worship, authority. That's what we've been ministering on this month. We, we trust uh, that it's been a blessing to you. Praise and worship is more than a fast and slow song on Sunday morning. Everything we do should become by the Holy Spirit, an act of praise and worship, okay? So, anyway, we um, we are studying that. Another one of our uh, theme scriptures is Romans 12, 1 and 2. Uh, Brethren, I, I beseech you by the mercies of God that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice unto God, holy and acceptable unto his service, and stop being conformed to this world or the system of this world pressed into the mold of the system of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind uh, as you may prove what is that good and acceptable perfect will of god so there's two things that we have to do to prove the will of god or to activate the will of god in our life we have to present our bodies and uh, bodies of an instrument of praise and then we have to present our minds and be, be transformed by the renewing of our mind. That's what worship does. So today we're talking about worship. Uh, worship, <clears throat> if you look at the gifts of the Holy Spirit, let's look at that 1 Corinthians uh, 14, 7 through 10. If you have your Bible, check it out. 1 Corinthians <clears throat> 14. Excuse me, 12, 1 Corinthians 12, 7 through 10. <clears throat> but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit. What does that mean? God wants to bless you and profit you. What is profit? Profit is made over the investment, okay? Profit with everything. So this is the life of profit. This is the life of success, prosperity. You don't hear this talk very often. But God gives us the manifestation of the Spirit so that the kingdom can profit, so you can profit spiritually, mentally, emotionally, financially, uh, relationally, and every other way. All right? Uh, so the gifts of the Spirit are given to profit. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit to another gifts of healing by the same spirit, to another working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another di diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. So there are three classifications of the gifts of the Holy Spirit on these supernatural gifts that causes us to totally profit. And that is gifts to act to know and to speak, okay? Words of wisdom, words of knowledge, we're speaking that. Discerning of spirits, we're knowing that. Uh, speaking diverse kinds of tongues. Um, acting, the gift of faith, <clears throat> okay? 
um, gifts of healing action, all right? So they are gifts that enable us to act, to know, and to speak the right things. You want to do that? The Holy Spirit is the key to that. Receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Have you received the baptism of the Holy Spirit since you believe? That's a whole other teaching, but <clears throat> what we need to do there is know that there is an experience subsequent to salvation which empowers us. Jesus looked at his disciples who he had already said their names were written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and he said, Tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued or clothed upon with power, clothing from on high, covered from on high with the Holy Spirit or with the armor of God. So uh, God is calling us to walk in acting and knowing and speaking. Now, action is praise. Knowing and speaking is worship. So we have to know and we have to speak it before we can act it. All right? So uh, God is giving us that twofold witness of worship. Knowing and speaking. Knowing and speaking. Worship, what worship does is it activates spiritual vision. Two eyes. Worship acts, activates spiritual wisdom. Okay? Praise is more about talking. Uh, worship is more about listening and seeing. Two eyes, two ears, one mouth. Right? Okay. Now. What does worship activate? Worship activates spiritual vision. The Bible says my people are destroyed from a lack of knowledge, okay? Uh, we have to know so that we can speak, all right? Many today are destroyed from a lack of knowledge, spiritual knowledge that's being revealed in worship. Worship is a, is a discipline of staying in tune with the voice of the Holy Spirit and the vision of the Father. Do you hear me? The voice of the Holy Spirit and the vision of the Father. Now, spiritual vision, the Bible says, without a vision, the people perish. They are unrestrained. So spiritual vision of what the Father does is a life-steering mechanism. They are unrestrained. Well, what is a restraint? Restraint, if you're driving a car, is the wheel, is the is the control system of the the wheel and how how am I going to control that car? All right. Number two or number three rather, its uh, vision is to be chronicled. And back two two write the vision and make it plain so that they that read it can run with it. Okay. So God is going to tell you things if you're listening, if you ask Him to, uh, if you're praying for spiritual enlightenment, okay? And when God tells you a thing, then you need to chronicle it. You need to write it down. Short pencil's better than a long memory, okay? So what does worship do? Worship does two things, okay? It hears and sees. It hears and sees, okay? It hears and sees two things, okay? So when I'm... In vision, I have two eyes. In hearing, I have two ears. That's the number of witness. Okay? Now, number three, worship produces revelation and visions. Okay? So, uh, let's go over here to 2 Corinthians 12, 1 through 4. It is not expedient for me, doubtless to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell or whether out of the body I cannot tell. God knows such a one caught me up to the third heaven. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knows how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words which are not lawful for a man to utter. So he said, I'll receive revelation and I receive, uh, I receive visions in worship. It's not expedient me for me, doubtless to glory. Okay. Now, 
I'm not going to glory in myself, but I glory in the Lord, and the glory of the Lord in worship brings us into visions, two of them, visions and revelation, okay? All right, we've got to know so that we can speak it into existence, power of life, death, sin, tongue, by your words you're justified, by your words you're condemned, and then what we know and speak, we begin to act on, all right? Worship happens when you remove the distractions, Isaiah 6, 1, in the year of the king Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up in his trade and filled the temple. So we got to get rid of that, the distractions, and focus on worship so that we can receive the revelation, the vision of God to know and to speak. And so remember the arrow, the three fletchings, okay? What do we have? We have the ability to act, that's praise, know and speak, that's worship. And it makes the purpose of God fly straight. Father, in the name of Jesus, anoint the people to receive the power of worship today. Thank you, Lord, that worship is the power to know and to speak the will of God so that it can be performed in the earth. We receive it right now because God is on.